Welcome back. After last week's videos on gods and spirits and the like, we will now look at two kinds of beings that are placed in a more or less intermediate position between the divine and humankind. On the one hand, there are angels, which are mostly found in the monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. In these religions, angels are seen as celestial beings that protect or guide people or as God's messenger or intermediaries. On the other hand, demons are well known in monotheistic as well as polytheistic contexts and have mostly negative connotations. We will start with the angels in the Hebrew Bible, which is a major reference for the Jewish and Christian religions, immediately followed by the same concept in the Muslim tradition. Strangely enough, Biblical Hebrew doesn't have a specific word for the angels. Malach, the word which is often translated in that manner when the character it refers to is linked to divinity, is the common name for a messenger or an emissary whose role is to connect distant people. He delivers the messages of a king, transmits his orders or its requests, and is even authorized to act in his name. The link between the messenger and the one who sends him is a very close one. What is done to the emissary is supposed to affect the very person who sends him, whether in terms of hospitality, friendship, contempt or violence. The same word, malach, serves to name the messengers a divinity sends to humankind. These messengers are at times humans, prophets or priests. But more often, they belong to the celestial word. In this case, the word malach is used metaphorically. Some development can be seen in the Hebrew Bible regarding these messengers of Adonai, the name of Israel's gods in the Bible. In the supposedly old texts, these angels constitute the court of God, his council. The most explicit reference in this sense is found in 1 Kings 22, where the prophet Micaiah describes the God of Israel as a king surrounded with its court. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him on his right and on his left. With the single exception of a certain Satan, these counselors are all anonymous and no description of them is given. In other ancient texts, the angel of Adonai is sent to humans. His mission is to protect the friend of God, to stand by them on hazardous journeys, to rescue them from deadly dangers, to comfort them when they are discouraged. Yet the angel's intervention is not always a positive one. It may also consist in inflicting a punishment on wrongdoers opposing their projects or warning them in order to drive them back to the right path. Note that this reflects to a certain extent what was said about Mesopotamian demons in other units of our MOOC. In fewer cases, their mission is to announce the birth of a son, as is the case in the famous scene in, of the announcement of Isaac's birth in Genesis 18. Sometimes angels are sent to confirm a mission, as is the case with Moses in Exodus 3. There are also angels intervening to transmit orders to prophets or to accompany a theophany. There is a problem with these ancient texts, which are likely to predate the Babylonian exile in the 6th century before the Common Era. In various instances, a scrambling effect results in a certain confusion between the angel and the God that sends him. Thus, in these texts, the distinction between the divinity and the angel is not always clear. At times, the angel is a way to represent God himself when he acts and speaks in relation to humans. Elsewhere, it is a being who, as a prophet messenger, speaks and acts in God's name his role being then purely functional. In any case, 
The angel as such is never the object of a particular attention. It is defined entirely by infunction, which is to bring Adonai into relation to human beings. In texts that are contemporaneous with, or later than the Babylonian exile, we can see a certain transformation. To be sure, the ancient idea doesn't wholly disappear. For instance, in writing dating back to the middle of the second century before our era, we still find angels sent to protect and save believers in danger or grant them victory. But in the late prophetic books, a new type of angel appears. In the book of Ezekiel, a figure like that of man, but which is a being of gleaming fire, carries the prophet from Babylon to Jerusalem, where it grants him divine visions. In the book of Zechariah, an angel explains the strange visions which the prophet receives. This new type of angel is linked to the function of revealing God's mysteries. Moreover, these angels appear to find an existence of their own. They are at times the subject of a more or less explicit description. Thus, Daniel describes the appearance of a man dressed in linen clothing, with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body looked like a precious gem. His face was like the appearance of lightning, and his eyes flamed like torches. His arms and feet shone like polished bronze, and his voice roared like a vast multitude of people. In more contexts, angels also take the form of horsemen, coming to guarantee victory to the believers. At this time, some angels received names. Michael, meaning who is like God, is a protective angel who takes his part in the victory over the kings of Persia. He will someday rise up to support the people and allow them to escape from death. Gabriel, meaning God is strong, stands by the prophet Daniel to reveal to him the mysteries of God. To conclude this video, we can say that the Hebrew Bible reflects a significant change in the representation of angels. Initially, they participate in an archaic vision of the heavenly court where they are the advisors to the divinity, which may also send them as messengers or assign them some other tasks. In this case, the distinction between the messenger and the deity is not always clear. Later, things evolve gradually towards a more personal representation of the angels whose missions are increasingly diversified. This development paves the way for a more radical transformation, which is evidenced in Jewish writings from the beginning of the Common Era, but also in the New Testament. The more the deity becomes transcendent, the more Jewish and Christian believers feel the need for a greater number of intermediaries connecting them to their God. In the next video, we will see how angels are represented and that other major monotheistic religion, Islam. <laughs>